Hi, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services, and today we're going to learn about Batch Transform. This is your deep dive. So first, someone says to you, you know, endpoints are really easy to spin up, right? That's just a single line of code. You write it, it's up there. But what if I need something to serve predictions on a schedule? What's your architect going to say? Batch transform. So a very common design pattern with batch transform is going to look like the following. You'll start with some event trigger, right? And that event trigger can be something gets uploaded to an S3 bucket, or it can be a cron job, which tells you the time of day, right? So if you want this to run every week, if you want this to run every day at certain times of the day, all that you can specify with your cron job. That's going to start a Lambda function, right? And the Lambda function is going to let you execute your code, right? As long as you're sitting in the Lambda parameters, uh, you're going to get to run that code. And that is our that is our serverless architecture. And that is going to kick off uh, an S3 bucket. Well, it's going to connect to the S3 bucket, right? And that's where your data is going to live. After that, uh, your S3 bucket is going to connect to Amazon SageMaker, which will start off the batch transform job. Uh, that turns on new EC2 instances, right? And those EC2 instances, again, same flow that's coming out of the Elastic Container Registry, the image for those, uh, that process is going to run, and then the data goes back to S3, right? The inference results go back to S3, and then the entire process comes back down on completion. And so essentially, you'll have your model, your trained model, uh, that the image is living in, in ECR and has been registered in Amazon SageMaker. And then the process will spin up and you can run inference on that data set. So you can run predictions on that data set and send those predictions back to S3. And so how to make it happen, right? First step is just getting your data in an S3 bucket, right? That, that's just a requirement. So we'll want to load uh, that data into an S3 bucket to initiate the batch transform job. The second step is getting our code into a Docker container, right? And so if we're using a built-in algorithm, well, we don't have to worry about this. But if we're using some of the other algorithms that are out there, you know, that people enjoy writing, uh, we're going to want to get that into a Docker container. And so the way that works is you'll take your script and you'll take your S3 location, uh, point to both of those in your Docker file, and then register that Docker file on ECR. Uh, you can also avoid Docker when you're utilizing script mode, which we learn about in a later video. And then the last thing you want to do is just execute that call, right? It's just call uh, the job to actually come online. And so most commonly, uh, customers will do this from the notebook instance, right? You'll actually be developing on your notebook instance. You'll be configuring all the content for running your job. You'll point to a transformer, and then you'll say transformer.transform, right? And then that spins up that new EC2 instance that's going to run inference over your data set and shoot it back to S3. Another common way of making this happen is in a Lambda function, right? You just want to point to your transformer from within that Lambda function and then call transformer.transform. And then it's nice because that Lambda function is totally done, right? There's no dependency between the batch transform job that's running on EC2 and that Lambda function. They're actually decoupled. And so you can run that batch transform process having executed and then finished that Lambda function. And so just remember, this is a RESTful API response. Um, so as, as we learned in some previous videos, the SageMaker endpoints are RESTful APIs. And that's actually going to be the same with your SageMaker batch transform jobs. Um, so first off, you want to be thinking JSON, right? You're going to be sending JSON objects to that endpoint or to that batch transformer. And then you're going to get a JSON response back from that. You also want to be careful about your payload size. Uh, frequently having smaller payload sizes on average works out. And we'll talk through some common design patterns to make that happen. Uh, number three is actually thinking about data that we're going to store in that image. And by data, I mean lines of code, right? Let's let's talk through that. OK, uh, so we've got our Docker file, right? And again, that's either a literal Docker file that we're bringing ourselves and writing from scratch, or that's a script mode Docker file that we're basically using for the managed containers. But so we've got a Docker file, and we're going to put a script inside of that Docker file. And that script is going to be doing one of two things. It's either going to be doing ETL, so it's actually going to be doing data transformation 
or it's going to be running inference. So it's gonna take a trained model and then run inference with that model. And both of those you can do in, in batch transform. And so a couple things your Python script could have, uh, you might wanna have it include a file header, right? So when that new CSV comes in and you wanna want a transformation on it, um, you'll wanna include the file header in that CSV. You'll also potentially want to include um, your fitted transformations. What I mean by this is let's say you are using batch transform to clean your data and not just to clean your data while you're developing, but to clean your data while you're running in production, right? Because you can actually utilize batch transform uh, as a production scenario. So it, it can actually transform some of your data um, on, on a schedule. Right? And so if you're doing that, um, you're gonna wanna include some data from your training set. And this is where I think in, in the data science community, we could up our game a little bit um, because when we're getting averages and we're getting standard deviations and everything that we're learning from our training data set, we actually wanna carry those over into our production side. Right? When we're taking a batch uh, data set and we need to run inference on that, it's not gonna be sufficient to use the batch uh, transform mean and standard deviation on that new data set that's coming in. We actually wanna use it from that previous data set because that's what the model is actually trained on. Uh, and then lastly, you can also have your ETL code. Uh, and so you're typically gonna point to your ETL code in uh, some type of Git uh, integration, right? If that's a, a Git repository solution that you're gonna have. Uh, unfortunately, we have some capabilities whereby you can connect to a Git repository and then run code on that Git repository without actually having copied it over to your notebook instance, which is pretty nice. Uh, so some other key points, right? You'll get your estimator for your model, in this case, a PCA. Uh, and then once you've got that estimator, you're just gonna say PCA.transform, right? The method's already there. Uh, and then same flow, you'll set up your EC2 instance utilization. So in this case, one M4 for Excel, uh, but then you'll have a couple other things too. Um, so here, uh, the strategy is multi-record that we're specifying. And so that's either single or multiple records per call. There's also an assembler for the output of this. So in this case, it's assemble with line. And so that's again, single or multiple output config. And lastly, we wanna understand why streaming is your friend, right? Because you think about data that's hitting your model, right? And so either that data is gonna be hitting your model all at one time, or you're gonna stream it out. And here I wanna help you understand why streaming can actually make your life easier. Uh, so first off, you can train your models faster when you're streaming your data. Second is you can run inferencing faster when you're streaming. And lastly is again, you're gonna use that smaller payload size. So everything just works a little bit easier. You're just gonna get responses faster when you have a smaller payload size. And so streaming and SageMaker, a couple ways we're gonna make this happen. Uh, you're gonna need a manifest file. Right, so that manifest file is typically a big long line of JSON objects. And so that is going to live uh, in S3. You're gonna point to that. After that, you're gonna set up pipe mode, right? And so pipe mode is actually setting up a FIFO queue from your S3 bucket to that cluster. And so it's gonna be streaming uh, your data from your S3 bucket to that cluster. And the last thing you wanna know about is record IO. Record IO is a data format that you will see and lots of places in SageMaker and many places in MXNet. Essentially, uh, it's gonna take your data and then make it really nice to work with reads and writes. Um, so it's gonna be highly optimized for model training. All right, let's go into an example. Okay, uh, so here we go. We are on a notebook instance, right? You'll know just from the, the, the URL up here, we're on a SageMaker a notebook instance in US East One. Uh, this is called Testy McTesterson. Uh, and let's, let's check this out here. Uh, so this is a bunch of code that's available online. Um, you can get this from a Git repository called Architecting for ML on Amazon SageMaker. And essentially, uh, we're gonna walk through this. So first off, this notebook instance is going to let us uh, run a large number of tuning jobs in parallel against each of our models, right? So we're gonna run a hyperparameter tuner on XGBoost and then Linear Learner then K and N, then factorization machines, right? And all of those uh, can be formatted to work in, in binary classification. Uh, we'll copy our data over to S3, right? And then what's kind of cool is that this process is actually gonna run in parallel, right? It's gonna run a single training job, we'll call tuner.fit, uh, but then we're actually gonna map that out over all of the models that we want to run. 
Um, so down here, you can specify the models that you want to run uh, and then actually set up this magic loop to run all of those concurrently, which is pretty cool. After that, uh, we're gonna use SageMaker search to find the best performing model. Uh, so here's that SageMaker search, right? Input data config contains our bucket, right? The name of our bucket, training job has completed. Uh, and we'll look at the validation AUC that's descending. Uh, after that, we're gonna wanna convert those into models, right? We need to actually uh, get the formal SageMaker model um, so that we can call transformer from that model. And so this is one way of doing that. Right, and this one way of doing that, basically we need the image. Uh, so we need, uh, yeah, yeah, we need the image, right? That's over here and that's the code for the algorithm. We need the model artifact. So what the uh, model learned during that training process, right? And how it's actually back in S3. Uh, we need our SageMaker session. We just want to name it. In this case, I just named it with a job name, right? And so that's a, a formal SageMaker model, right? So once we've got the model, uh, we can run batch transform on that model, right? And this part is super easy, right? <laughs> because everything is all set up. Um, so I'm gonna loop through my models, right? And in that case, right, I just collected the top 15 models. So the first 15 models. And so I'm gonna loop through those guys. For each one of them, I'm calling a separate batch transform job. And again, no interdependencies here, right? These are decoupled. Um, these are decoupled processes. And so for each of my 15 models, I'm gonna have a separate M4X large that's coming up online, right? So we have 15 M4XLs that are all coming up online. They're all collecting my test data. They're running inference on my test data and they're writing it into this directory in S3 that's called batch results, right? And so that's using my models to run inference. Uh, after that, um, I'm gonna copy uh, that directory from S3 to my notebook instance, right? So that's that batch results folder right over here. Uh, now I'm gonna loop through those 15 inference response responses. I'm gonna consolidate all of them and I'm gonna compare them. And that's gonna let us actually do some ensembling. Uh, so over here, right, we're gonna loop through those batch results. Uh, the, the results from the batch transform job are actually going to come into in this dot out format. So I just copied it over to say just dot CSV instead of dot out. Uh, there we go. So that's a copy. Uh, then I'm turning that into its own data frame, right? And then we'll just concat those data frames. And then this function uh, basically is going to let us consolidate those results. And so for each new point of data that we're shooting up, to those 15 separate batch transform clusters that are running, um, those are all unique predictions for that one single point. And so for each row in my test data set, I'm gonna have 15 models, right? So think spreadsheet with me, right? Each row is gonna be a uh, point of data that we wanna classify, and then each column is a different model's re response. And so after that, we just wanna add the labels to our consolidated data frame. That happens down here. And then check this out, right? So these are the index spaces for all of the data. And then these are the different versions of XGBoost uh, that we want to run. And these are the re model responses from all of those different versions of XGBoost. And then here's one column that's the max, right? The min, the difference between those two, just to make sure that we, we did actually run a, run a correct process there. And then there's that label Y true. And so down here, uh, we're gonna generate a confusion matrix for different models and for different combination of models. And so down here, uh, we're gonna get the results without ensembling, right? And so our precision uh, in this case is gonna be just under 20%. Our recall is gonna be 67%. We've got an overall binary classification accuracy of 89%. Uh, and that's just looking at one model. Right? But then if we look at the results with a different model, uh, precision goes up, right? Precision went up by about five percentage points, which is, which is awesome. Uh, interestingly, the recall dropped, right? And that's, that's most likely because there's, there's so much content here that it's, it's actually getting more precise, but it's, it's doing less, uh, less classifying, which, it, which is definitely interesting. It's probably a little bit too strong in that negative class. Uh, and overall binary classification is, is staying pretty comparable. So that in that scenario, it just moved over um, some of our class classification to the other class. So let's let's switch back.
All right, so some pro tips here. Uh, remember, keep it small. That That is a RESTful API response. And so uh, you are going to want to have results coming out of batch transform that are, that are relatively on the small side. You can increase that, uh, but generally keeping it smaller is helpful. Uh, it is also a very common design pattern to cache your results in a database. Right, so let's say you actually need real-time responses and you just don't want to have the overhead of managing that endpoint right? or having that endpoint hanging. Uh, that can be an expensive instance in some cases. And so it's very common for customers to run batch transform to get the inference responses and then load those inference responses into a database, which can then serve those responses in real time. And then you'll just periodically update those prediction responses. Uh, the last thing you want to think about is a pipeline model, right? And so you can string together multiple models in order to run these processes. We're going to learn about that in a later video. And so with that, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a machine learning specialist at Amazon Web Services, and I'm very happy to talk with you today about Batch Transform. Have a great day.